I know what you're trying to do. I'm trying to free your mind, Neo. But I can only show you the door. You're the one that has to walk through it. Hey, friends. Welcome to The Line of Fire. This is Michael Brown. I asked the same question. What are the greatest challenges facing the church today? I asked this question on Facebook a few days ago and said, I will answer your questions. I will respond to your comments on the air this week. So that's what I'm doing now, not taking your calls. But look, bottom line, if Dr. Martin Luther King was right, and I believe he was when he said that the church must be reminded it is not the master of the state or the servant of the state, but the conscience of the state. And where have you been, Mr. Underwood? And I noticed on the calendar I'm supposed to marry y'all. What makes you think I'd marry you? You're one of the sorriest church members I have. You're not worth 15 cents. Let me tell you all, everybody here, how much I love these kids. Do you know I love you, sir? Stand up, big boy. Do you know I love you? All right. All right. Give me a little love. I'm a real deal. If he was right, and again, I believe he was in saying that, then the hope of America is the health of the church. The hope of America is a healthy, vibrant church, loving God, loving neighbor. When churchgoer Stephen Rogers makes his way to the altar, he approaches the reverend with a message of his own. Emotions erupted. And you have to spin it. Well, you're fine. No, you don't. No, 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 no. Full of the Spirit, full of the Word, glorifying Jesus. That's the hope for the nation. And, and as I've said over and over again, that my greatest concern is not so much the presence of darkness, it's the absence of light. So if we can address problems in our midst, if we can face challenges head on, then we, by God's grace, can be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. And we can be an effect, bring a positive effect, be a positive change, a positive change agent here in America. And around the world. So I asked for input on Facebook. Again, I won't be taking your calls or commenting on breaking news as we focus on this, but let's just see comments that have come in and I'm going to respond to them. We got flooded the moment I posted this. So let's just see here. Oh, where am I going to start? Boy, a lot of great comments and keep scrolling down there even more. Okay. There has been a real turning away from biblically-based repentance preaching in recent decades. And so what you have to do is you got to protect the flock. That looks like several things. That means you got to be teaching biblical theology, not just hoopology. Pastor, you got to build biblical theology in your church. You got to start helping your people to understand the law and the gospel and its relationship and have actual verses. You have to actually get in the Bible. Let me say that again. You can't just talk about the Bible. You have to get in the Bible. Now it's time for y'all to grow up. It's time for us to grow up as believers. I'm not talking about beating people over the head and laying a guilt trip on everyone so you go to church feeling good and you leave feeling bad. You go in, Kyle, I can't wait to get service. You leave, like, well, I'm just a miserable, rotten sitter, and God's mad at me. No, that's not the gospel. That's not repentance. Of course, if we're living in overt sin and we're living in rebellion. Of course, if we're living in overt sin and we're living in rebellion and we're going to church services just as a form of religion to ease our conscience, we should leave feeling worse until we repent and get right with God and, and, and turn away from that sin. But that's what the biblical message of repentance is. You say, well, 
I've heard that the Greek word for repentance is metanoia, which just means change of mind. And the verb is metanoeo, which just means change your mind. And if you look at the Greek words, that's exactly what they're saying. Oh, we know that the etymological origin, where the word comes from, is from the words change and mind. And that part of repentance is a change of mind. But you can't just look at etymology. You have to look at usage. Here's what the word comes from. Here's how the word is used. Here's how the word is used in certain contexts. Here's how the word is used in certain cultures. Here's how the word is used in Gentile circles, in Jewish circles, in religious circles, in secular circles. These are all things that have to be looked at. And in my field, where I got my PhD, Near Eastern Languages and Literatures from New York University, I really focused on meaning of words. My doctoral dissertation was on the meaning of the Hebrew root rafa. I've written numerous articles for scholarly dictionaries and encyclopedias focusing on the meaning of specific words. So I understand how this works. And over the years, I've required a massive library of dictionaries in the original languages. And I can tell you that universally, Biblical scholars, New Testament scholars, when you look at the lexicons, when you look at the major dictionary works, they will tell you that the New Testament me meaning of me metanoia is not simply a change of mind, especially when it's in context of, of the gospel being preached. Not, you know, someone that had a change of heart and should, uh, maybe I shouldn't do this. No, it is a change of mind and heart and life is an about face. It is a turning. Just like the Hebrew concept of repentance is not just sorrow but a turning away from sin. In fact, the, the common phrase to this day to do repentance is to do tshuva, and tshuva is an about face. So that's a big problem, lack of preaching repentance. And if you get my book, End of the American Gospel Enterprise, which came out in 1989, that's something that we focused on back then, and of course, before then, preaching before I was writing. Rebecca's point here is very relevant in America, but not just in America. So in many of our circles, especially our charismatic circles, there is a strong emphasis on passion and really meeting with the Lord and really encountering him in worship, which is wonderful and foundational and biblical and critically important. And, and we, we must really know him and encounter him in that living, life-changing way. But it's not spirit or mind or, or, or heart or truth. It's, it's both. It's word and spirit. It's heart and mind. Jesus says the Father's longing for, for worshipers, seeking worshipers who worship him in spirit and in truth. <laughs> Glory. 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 Glory.
So we must have that passion, that love, that deep devotion to the Lord, and we should encounter him on some level in worship, in the life and power of the Spirit. On the one hand, on the other hand, we fill our minds with biblical truth. We learn about who God is. We learn about what he desires, what he requires, what pleases him, what displeases him. Jesus says, come to me, all you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. What is that? Shabbat. <clears throat> Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am weak and lowly at heart, and you will find rest for your soul. <clears throat> what is he telling them to find rest from? The law. The law. The law. And Jesus tried, you're waiting for Saturday to rest. But Jesus said, Jesus basically said, what if I tell you that in any day of the week, you can take my yoke upon you? Oh, I'm about to speak in tongues right now. What, he said, you can take my yoke upon you right now and learn of me. For I'm meek and lowly at heart. You'll find Shabbat. That's the word he probably would have said. You will find Shabbat, not in a, in your body, but you will find you will find. Uh, suke or, or nefesh Shabbat. You will find Shabbat of spirit and soul. Hallelujah to the living God. You you will find real, real, real Shabbat. And if you're looking for Shabbat in Saturdays, man, that's boring. 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 <clears throat> what is he telling them to find rest from? The law. And if you're looking for Shabbat in Saturdays, man, that's boring. <clears throat> what is he telling them to find rest from? The law. And if you're looking for Shabbat in Saturdays, man, that's boring. <clears throat> what is he telling them to find rest from? The law. And if you're looking for Shabbat in Saturdays, man, that's boring. <clears throat> what is he telling them to find rest from? The law. And if you're looking for Shabbat in Saturdays, man, that's boring. And then those things in us make us strong and healthy. It's not either or. And yes, we have a terrible habit of, of rewriting Scripture to conform to our desires rather than being conformed by the testimony of Scripture. Uh, Carrie says, big problem in front of the church is religion. Yeah, so the word religion in most of our English Bibles occurs only, only twice, and that's in the book of Jacob, James, chapter 1, where he says that... If you're hungry for this anointing, just lift your hands right now, and I'm going to send it right through the TV screen, right into your homes. In Jesus' name. The hope of America is the health of the church. The hope of America is a healthy, vibrant church, loving God, loving neighbor, full of the Spirit, full of the Word, glorifying Jesus. That's the hope for the nation. I know what you're trying to do. I'm trying to free your mind, Neo, but I can only show you the door. You're the one that has to walk through it. 